Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to My Messy Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing an evaluation on my Force 120 horse outboard. Follow along. Let's see if this thing's a good candidate to put back on the water. Before we get too carried away working on the motor part of this uh, project, I would like to take a look at the trim system and see what we need to do to get it functioning. Now well, on to the next little issue that we've got here. The uh, trim tilt pump is off of the boat. You can see it looks like something is supposed to attach here. And here are four uh, hard lines that come up off of the actuator assemblies. It looks like something's supposed to mount here. I've been looking through parts diagrams online and I think I've got my head wrapped around mostly what I'm going to need. Unfortunately, ouch, it's a little on the spendy side. Kind of hard to justify dumping well over half what you spent on the boat into fixing the power trim. Uh, I'm going to continue looking around and see if I can find some better priced parts. But uh, before we get too carried away, we need to make sure that this motor is going to run. I'm not sure how long it's been since this motor has run. We took the uh, covers off of the carburetors the other day and it appears that there's the motor was fogged. There's a little quite a bit of oil residue kicking around in there so that's a good sign. But uh, now that I got a charged up battery on it we need to do a compression test and check for spark. And then we need to put a little bit of uh, fuel down the throat of the carburetor and see if it'll fire off. I've got a uh, set of muffs to put on the water system so that we'll be able to uh, keep the motor cool. So let me get you set up and we'll take a crack at doing that. So the Force 120 is a uh, four cylinder. I won't claim to be an expert on it. Uh, my understanding is that it came from the Chrysler West Bend line and they got bought out I think by the same company that owned Bayliner and the name got changed to Force and then eventually that company got bought out by the same company that owns Mercury and Force became part of Mercury. I'm guessing that that company decided they didn't need to have uh, Mercury outboards, Mariner outboards and Force outboards and the last Force model year that, uh, of production was 1999. Now, I was told that when I was buying this uh, boat and motor package that this was a 1998 Force. However, uh, according to the model number, it's a 92. Now, that doesn't really make any difference to me um, as far as uh, how good of a motor it is. It's uh, just a matter of knowing which model year to, uh, to look up parts for. So, let's pull these spark plug leads off. Now I have disconnected the negative battery lead, so that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, that's a different style of spark plug. There's no el electrode that comes up. A little bit of oil on there. Doesn't look too bad at all. No rust anyways, that's a good sign. And another advantage to this style of plug is you don't have to worry about uh, gap, but it's kind of established. That one looks good too. A little bit of carbon on that one, but it doesn't look bad. Now one problem with me working on this by myself is that there's not someone to hold the uh, compression tester. Well, another person runs the starter. So I think you guys are going to have to watch the compression. And these have O-rings on them so we don't have to uh, get too carried away. Snug them down. I wonder if there's a starter solenoid that I could jump across easily. There is. I've got my compression tester set up here. You guys can see it over there. Um, we're on the top cylinder 
and I got a little bar I'm going to use to jump across the starter solenoid. The advantage to jumping across the starter solenoid instead of using the key to turn this over is that uh, there won't be any power going to the electronics, risking damaging those. Well, let's see what we get for uh, compression on the top cylinder. Okay, that works out. 135 PSI. For a two stroke that hasn't run in a number of years, that's not bad. Let's check the next cylinder. And 130, 135, 140 PSI. That's pretty good. Supposedly the force engines used a different compression in each of the cylinders or the top and the bottom were supposed to be the same and the middle two were supposed to be slightly higher. And the reason they did that is the two in the middle had better cooling, I guess, or better, um, perhaps better uh, fuel flow and therefore ran a little cooler. And the outer cylinders tended to run just a little bit warmer. So they lowered the compression ratio. I don't know how true that is. That's what I've read. Okay, that's number three. Let's see what we got. That's about, I'm going to say, 142. And we're about 132 thereabouts. So it looks to me like that uh, forum post is accurate. The top and the bottom cylinders seem to match pretty good, and the middle two cylinders seem to match pretty good. But I'm going to say that that is uh, likely a good engine. The compression tester kit that I'm using is just a relatively inexpensive one that I got from Amazon. It comes with uh, four different adapters, I guess five, including the, uh, the raw uh, tip of the uh, tester, and then the two um, push-in ones that you just hold against the spark plug hole if you don't have a decent uh, adapter. One with an angle, one with a straight. And the pressure gauge, it's got a quick disconnect, some basic instructions. I don't remember exactly what it is. I'll throw a link down in the bottom just for something to do. Uh, at this time, it's not going to be an affiliate link because I don't have an Amazon affiliate code. But just can, for convenience to you guys, this is a very nice kit as far as I'm concerned. Seems to work very well. I can't make any guarantees on accuracy, but uh, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. So what do you figure? Should we put a little bit of uh, two-stroke fuel down the spark plug holes or just feed the carburetors? I think I'm just going to feed the carburetors. That way we get the fuel uh, coming up from the bottom end, lubricating all the bearings and everything. Okay, all the spark plug boots are attached. Let me go and get a little bit of uh, two-stroke fuel and uh, set up the console so that I can actually try and use the key. Sounds pretty good to me. I 
I think we'll call that a success. So I think I'm going to end the video here. This is a good start. Uh, next stage will be cleaning the carburetors up, replacing some fuel lines, and uh, getting this thing so that it will uh, run on the carburetors rather than on just a little bit of fuel squirted down the uh, carb. Also, I'll keep you uh, informed on how I make out sourcing parts for the trim and tilt unit and uh, cleaning up the boat a little more. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll see you in the next mess.